Okay, we're holding today in the second Megillah and Zayin Amud Bet, just towards the top of the page. Amen. The, the second line on the page, which is Raba. Raba, we're going to start off with a story here. The second line on the page, Zayin Amud Bet. No, no, you're, you're right place, but Zayin Amud Bet, just the top, yeah. Raba Shadr Leila Mari Barmar, that's where we're going to start. We're going to have three sections in today's learning. The first section will deal back with what we left off with yesterday. Mishloach Manot, and the way they fulfilled Mishloach Manot specifically. Move this so I can see you. Much better. Um, and then we'll get on to a second section, will be the, the continuum of the Mishnayot of Ein Bein. We'll contrast Yom Tov and Shabbat. And then the third section we'll get to is the contrast between uh, Shabbat and Yom Kippur. So we'll get to that as well, Bezat Hashem today. This is the series of Mishnayot known as the Ein Bein. So we're going to get to them. The differences between like items. So, Bezat Hashem, let's get started at the top of the page. Rabba Shadrle Lamari Barmar Biyara Baye. Rabba sent Mishlach Manot, Zampurim, to Mari Barmar in the hands of Abaye. So, Abaye was the Shliach. Rabba was sending Mishlach Manot to Mari Barmar. Actually, on, on the Mishlach Manot, apparently part of the Minhag is also to use a Shliach, a messenger, not just deliver directly. That's probably why he did it. So, what did he send to Mari Barmar? Mali Taska de Kaspa, he sent a bag full of dates. Umalikosa Kimcha da Avshuna, and a cup full of dried out sweetened flour. So Amrle, these are sweet items. So Amrle Abai, Abai said to Rabba, the sender, Hashta Amar Mari, Mari, the recipient is going to say, I chakla malka lehave. If the farmer or the villager becomes a king, meaning, you who used to be not a Rosh Hashiva, and now you're the head of Pompadita, lehave dikula mitzavare lo nachit. The bag from his neck that he used to use as a farmer, he doesn't remove. As Rashi explains, it means is you're sending him such like mundane or basic items, even though you've become the Rosh Hashiva. For the Rosh Hashiva, you would have sent more significant sure. items, as he said. Now, it's not clear exactly why Abai was giving this criticism. It's not necessarily his place. But uh, anyways, either way. Hadr Shadr Lei Ihu, so when, when Mari Barmar received it, he sent back to Rabba, Mali Taska de Zangvila, a bag full of ginger, Umali Kosa de Palpalta Arika, and a cup full of long uh, peppers, which are spicy things. So Rabbi, Abai said back to him, he said to Mari Barmar, Hashta Amar Mar, Rabba is going to say when he receives this, Ana Shadri Lechulia, I sent him sweet things, Vi'iu Shadr Lechurfa, and he sent me. Uh, spicy things. Now again, it's not it's not exactly clear what's the shot, but that's the. So Avai Avai said, When I left Rabba's house originally on, on the mission, have I was I was satiated. I wasn't hungry. But kimatoy latam when I got to Mari Barmar's house, They brought me sixty dishes of sixty types of foods. Va'achli shitin plugi, and I ate sixty pieces of food. Ubishula batraita and the last dish, Havukaru Lei Tsali Kadar, they used to call it uh, pot roast. Ubaati Lamekas Tsabatra, and I wanted to bite the plate afterwards. Now what Abai was emphasizing was even though I left satisfied from Rabba's house, after going to Mari Barmar's house, the food was so tasty that I wanted to even eat much more, even though I was initially satisfied. So Rabai Abai said, Hanada Amr Inshi, this is like the expression people say. A poor, uh, a, a hungry person, a poor person, is, is hungry and he doesn't realize. It means a person who gets used to his way of being hungry doesn't realize that he's hungry when there's something that's tasty in front of him. So then it reminds him of inami. Alternatively, a similar expression. That there's always room for dessert. So he said, "Is when something's tasty in front of you, there's going to be room, even though I was not hungry before." It's interesting. Uh, right. Yeah. Abai bar Ovin and Rabbi Chanina bar Ovin Michal Fisu the Tayu la Dadi. These two rabbis, Abai bar Ovin and Rabbi Chanina bar Ovin, used to exchange their meals with each other. Now Rashi says that that means one would eat with the other on this Purim, and then the other would eat with him the other, the next Purim. The Ran learns a little bit differently, and the Ran learns that they would actually exchange. If I remember correctly, the Ran says they would exchange their food, meaning they were poor. So each one only had a certain amount of food for both Mishloach Manot and Seuda. So what they would do is, I would give one would give the other that food, the other one would give him that food, so they could fulfill 
No, not necessarily back. Let's say he had $20 worth of food. The other one had $20 worth of food. So he would give him his food and he would give him his food. And in doing so, what ends up happening is they fulfill Mishloach Manot and they had food for, no, and they had food for Seuda because ah. you also have the mitzvah of Seuda. So then you fulfilled both. That's how the Ran actually learns here. Ah. Actually, it's a little bit difficult how he learns. But anyways, Amar Rav, let's continue. Rav says the most famous line in all of Megillah, Mechayev inish lebesumi vipuria. A person is obligated to become drunk on wine, says Rashi. And Purim, Adelo Yada ben Ar Haman Labarach Mordechai, till he doesn't know the difference between Haman is cursed and Mordechai is blessed. And there's many mefarshim as to what this definition would be. Sure. The most obvious would be is you have to get completely drunk and you can't make the distinction between them. That would be just um, the simple distinction. Rabbi Zera Avdu, sorry, Rabbi of Rabbi Zera Avdu Seudat Purim Bahade Adadi. Now, some people say the reason this next story is quoted after that past statement is to show that you should be careful. Is Rabbi and Rabbi Zera made a Seudat Purim together? Ibsum, they got drunk. Come Rabbi, Rabbi got up, Shachte le Rabbi Zera, and he killed Rabbi Zera. Now, that's what the story says. Unfortunately, some unfortunately want to say he didn't actually kill him, they learned Torah, and he uh, overwhelmed him in Torah. But it says Shachte. Shachte means he slaughtered him. So Rabbi slaughtered Rabbi Zera. Lemachar the next day, by Rachame Rabbi Davin, Vaachi, and he brought Rabbi Zera back to life. For the Amoraim to Davin and bring someone back to life was not a not a major thing. They could do it. So the Shana the next year, Amar Le Neti Mar Abed Sudat Purim Ba'Adi Adadi. So Rabbi said to Rabbi Zera, Why don't we have the Seuda again together? Last year was great. So Amar Le, <laughs> so Rabbi Zera said back, Lo Vechol Shaita Veshaita Mitrachis Nisa. Not every time will a miracle happen. I don't want to rely on that. You get a little out of control. I'm not getting involved this year. So some say that's why it's brought right after the responsibility to get drunk is to say, if drunkenness is going to cause you to do things that are inappropriate or out of control, yeah, you shouldn't. I mean, some say actually that's why these two statements are put next to each other. Amar Rava Rava continues. Seudat Purim she'achla balayla. If you eat Seudat Purim at night, this is a very big inyan. Some people start drinking at night. There's really no inyan. The seuda right. is not at night. Right. Seuda is during the day. So seudat Purim that was eaten at night, lo yatsayadei chovato. He hasn't fulfilled his obligation. It's supposed to be during the day. My time, what's the reason? Yemei mishteh v'simcha aktiv. Because the Pasuk says in Megillah, days of feasting and joy. Actually, this also ties in. Some people, you see, they start their meal Already it's like shkia. They wait so late into the day. Right. It's supposed to be a May Mishteh Simcha. It should really have started during the day. Right. During the day. So you start a couple hours before shkia, okay. But the point is, some people, they, the whole day they're running around, and then they start the Mishteh right before, shkia right before or after shkia even. That's not the kiyom. You're supposed to be Yemei. It's supposed to be during the day. Just okay. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Rav Ashi had the Yativ Kameder of Kahana. <coughs> Rav Ashi was sitting in front of Rav Kahana. We're going to see this was in the day of Purim. Now Rav Kahana was going to give Shiur. I mean, what's in Purim? Of course, you have Yeshiva like regular, as a business like regular. So Naga velo atu Rabbanan. The rabbis didn't come. The students weren't coming to the Yeshiva that day. So Amar Le. So Rav Ashi said to Rav Kahana, "My time velo atu Rabbanan. Why are the rabbis not here? It's, it's the Purim day, but why aren't they here? They should be here." So Rav Kahana, it seems like he was the Rebbe. He said back, Dilma Tridi Bisudat Purim. Perhaps they're busy with Seudat Purim. Meaning, that's the mitzvah of the day, so that's why they're not here. So Amr Leis Rav Ashi said, Ba'orta. Couldn't they have eaten it last night? Because last night was also Purim. So Amr Leir Kahana said to him, Amr Rava, don't you know what Rava Paskin, Seudat Purim She'achla Balayla? That the meal of Purim that's eaten at night, lo chovato, you're not yotze. So that's why they didn't eat it last night. So Amar Lei, this Girso changed over here. I'm going to go with the Masorah Tashas. He says, lo shmi'ali. I didn't hear that. Ravashi said, you know, I never heard that psak. So Tana Minei, just skip the next line. Yeah. Tana Minei arba in Zimni, and he learned it from him 40 times. Means Rav Ashi learned the halacha from Rav Kahana 40 times. V'damilei kemad demanach bekise. <clears throat> until it was like it was put in his wallet, meaning until it was totally organized with his other halachot. It's an amazing thing also. It's just a straightforward halacha, but he learned it 40 times from Rav Kahana so that he would know that he had a clarity in this halacha. So that's, if that's a simplistic halacha, halacha kam v'kam, it's a complicated, you have to review and review until it's wow. organized in your head. Okay, let's continue. Let's move on out of the second section. Mishnah. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to continue on the Mishnayot now that contrast like items or similar items and show what the differences are. 
And based on that, the Gemara will explain what the similarities are. Meaning that this is going to be the derech of the next few Mishnayot. Ein ben yom tov le Shabbat ela ocha nefesh bilvad. So, as Rashi explains, in terms of what you're permitted to do ideally, lechatchila, the difference between yom tov and Shabbat is ocha nefesh, which means these melachot and Shabbat you're not allowed to do even when they're in association with food preparation. But when it comes to Yom Tov, we do have a leniency to do melachot of food preparation, which is called ochel nefesh. Says the Gemara, <coughs> the fact that we say that's the only difference, that implies hal inyan machshire ochel nefesh. <coughs> in terms of the preliminary steps of food preparation, meaning the step before direct food preparation, for example, sharpening a knife, to do food preparation, shavin. the Mishnah implies they would be the same, which means it would also be you asur, on Shabbat, asur, on Yom Tov. no, it would also be asur on Yom Tov. The Mishnah only says, ochel nefesh is permitted on Yom Tov, okay. but that implies that Shabbat and Yom Tov are the same regarding machshire ochel nefesh, uh-huh. regarding the preliminary step before ochel nefesh, uh-huh. like sharpening a knife, for example, that not only would that be prohibited on Shabbat, Shabbat. but also okay. on Yom Tov, okay. exactly. Okay. So the Gemara explains, Matnit and the Rabbi Yudah, our Mishnah is not like Rabbi Yudah, because there's a machloket about this. The Tanya, as the Brayta tells us, Ein ben Yom Tov the Shabbat ela ochel nefesh. So the Tanakhama says, like our Mishnah, the only difference between Yom Tov and Shabbat is ochel nefesh, food preparation melachot. Rabbi Yudah matir af machshire ochel nefesh. But Rabbi Yudah says you're even allowed to do the preliminary step, the step before ochel nefesh on Yom Tov as well. My time of the Tanakhama. What is the reason of the Tanakhama? So it's based on psukim that talk about what you're allowed to do on Yom Tov. Parashat Bo. Omar Kar, the pasuk says. Who velo machshirav? The pasuk tells us regarding Yom Tov, you are allowed to do it, meaning uh, you're allowed to do preparation. <clears throat> uh, one second, Sorry, one second. Ochel nefesh, right? On Yom Tov, you're allowed to do melachot of ochel nefesh, but velo machshirav, not the preliminary step, not the step before that. For Rabbi Yehuda, what is Rabbi Yehuda? How does he say you could do the step before? So he says the pasuk also says lachem. Lachem means on Yom Tov you're allowed to do things that are for you, including not just ochel nefesh work, but also the step before the preliminary, like sharpening a knife. Lachem lechol tzachechem, whatever you need. Ve'idach nami achdiv lachem. So what does the Tanakhama do with lachem? Lachem velo le'ovdei kochavim. The Tanakhama says that teaches you, yeah, you are allowed to do work that is associated with food. That's true, you are allowed to, but only for yourself not for food preparation for goyim, mm-hmm. okay. and not for, your, for, for dogs either. It means it's only for food, ochel nefesh for yourself on Yom Tov, but for other goyim, dogs, that's not allowed. What does he do with the word who? Gemara says, so Rabbi Yudah says the following. It's a contradiction. At one end, who seems to be a limitation, lachem is an inclusion. So the way he explains it is as follows. The difference is, if it was machshir, a preliminary, like sharpening a knife, that was able to be done before Yom Tov, so then you're not allowed to do that on Yom Tov. So for example, as Rashi explains, if a knife became dull before Yom Tov, you could have sharpened it before Yom Tov. Right. You were lazy, you were negligent, whatever it was. So, you're so not right. allowed to sharpen on Yom Tov. But if it's impossible to, let's say it became dull on Yom Tov. So that's machshiri ochel nefesh, the preparation, preliminary for food, preparate for food, uh, melacha, you are allowed to then do on Yom Tov. That's Rabbi Yehuda's position. Let's move on. Says the Mishnah. Next point. Ein ben Shabbat liyom kipurim ela shezeh zedono bidei adam vizeh zedono bikaret. The difference between Shabbat and Yom Kippur, and both of them melacha is asur, we know that, Shabbat and Yom Kippur, you're not allowed to do melacha, mm-hmm. but if one does and he's warned and there's edim, meaning all of the edim, atra'ad, it's bizadon, he does it intentionally, the punishment is different. The punishment for Shabbat is skila, bidei adam, means they stone in, in this world, uh, punishment in Beit Din, he's killed, and the punishment for Yom Kippur, for doing melacha on Yom Kippur, is karet. Okay, that's the difference between them. Says the Gemara, Hal inyan tashlumin is very interesting. In regards to payments, zevze shavin, they are the same. Now, what does that mean? There's a concept in Alakha called kam le bidarabamine. What does that mean? It means if a person does an action that levels two types of punishments against him death and monetary payment. Because he's chayav in death, he's going to be chayav mita, 
it exempts him, Patur, he's exempt from the monetary payment. So just to illustrate... From, from the debt he has. He doesn't have to pay the debt. Exe I, the debt. The debt. He's going to he's gonna be killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be killed, he but he doesn't have to pay the monetary payment. Very interesting. Come lay the It exempts him the greater thing. The greater thing exempts the monetary payment. So with Shabbat, we understand that if somebody goes and the way Rashi explains, he lights up somebody else's property yeah. on Shabbat. So now he's chayav two things. He, was, he did havara, he lit a fire on Shabbat, and he's chayav for the damages that he caused that fellow. So the halacha is, he's chayav mita, and he does not have to pay for the, the, the damages. House. Very interesting. So the Mishnah, by, by putting these two together, it implies that in, in regards to Yom Kippur, it's the same. Even though he's not chayav mita, what is he chayav? He's chayav karet. It's like death. I mean, karet is a spiritual death, you want to call it. And therefore, just as with Shabbat, if you're chayav mita, you're patur from tashlumin, from payments. Also with Yom Kippur, if you're going to be chayav karet, yeah. you're Before, also going from, to be exempt from tashlumin. tashlumin. Exactly, in the same case. Wow. So if he lights up someone else's gadish, his grain on Yom Kippur, he's chayav karet and he's patur from tashlumin. Exactly. Mani Matnitin, who is the author of the Mishnah? Rabbi Nechoni ben Akana, he hits the position of Rabbi Nechoni ben Akana. The Tanya, like the Brayta, illustrates. Rabbi Nechoni ben Akana, Yoset, Yom Kippurim ki Shabbat. Rabbi Nechoni ben Akana would say, Yom Kippur is like Shabbat, the Tashlumin, regarding payments. Ma Shabbat mit Chayyab ben Afshaw, Patomina Tashlumin. Just as on Shabbat, is Chayyab mita, and he is exempt from payments. Af Yom Kippurim, is Chayyab ben Afshaw, Patomina Tashlumin. So to with Yom Kippur, is Chayyab with his soul, means Karet. And I'll be patur from Tashlumi. Okay, Tananatam. Now we have a Mishnah Mesechet Makot that says as follows. Kol chayavei kritut shelaku, anyone who's chayav karet. Okay, he was chayav karet for some sort of an avera that he did. Shelaku. And he received makot. Okay, he received lashes. Mm -hmm. Now in order to receive lashes, when he did the avera, he would have, to, he would have had to have been warned that if you do this avera, you're going to receive malkot. But either way, if he was chayav karet and he received malkot, lashes in court, nifteru midei kritatan, he is exempt from karet. The lashes will take away the chiyuv of karet. Shene'emar, like the pasuk says in Kitavo, v'nikla achicha le'inecha. It says, your brother will be demeaned, and nikla means lowered, in front of your eyes. But the way we're explaining the pasuk is, kivan shalaka, once he is lashed, he gets malkot, He's like your brother again. What do you mean he's like your brother again? He is clean from the karet. The karet is removed from him. Divri Rabbi Hananya ben Gamliel. So this is Rabbi Hananya ben Gamliel's position in Mesechet Makot. That if somebody is chayav karet, he gets malkot, takes away the chiyuv of karet. Now he's exempt from the karet. Am Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan commented on that. Chalukin alav chaverav al Rabbi Hananya ben Gamliel. The other Chachamim argue on Rabbi Hanan ben Gamliel, and they say it's not true. Is that someone's Chayav Karet and he gets Malkot, it does not take away his, his Karet, he's still Chayav Karet. That was Rabbi Yochanan's position. So what the Gemara is about to do now is to try to show a proof from our Mishnah to Rabbi Yochanan that there are other Chachamim who disagree with Rabbi Hanan ben Gamliel that Malkot will not remove Karet, that they disagree. And our Mishnah is the proof. Amar Rav, Amri Bey Rav, so it says in the Beit Medrash of Rav, Tanin our Mishnah told us as follows. Ein bein Yom HaKippurim l'Shabbat, the only difference between Yom Kippur and Shabbat, ele sheze zidono, zidono bide adam, veze zidono bi karet. We said, if somebody does melacha and Shabbat, is chayav bide adam, is chayav skila in court by people, and on Yom Kippur is chayav bi karet, okay. which means in Shammai. So the Gemara says, but ve'im ita, this is Rav's proof to Rav Yochanan, if, like Rav Hanan ibn Gamliel is saying, is true, that Malkot could take away Karet, Malkot is Bidei Adam. So then it would come out that Yom Kippur and Shabbat are both Bidei Adam, because the punishment for Yom Kippur is Karet. But if Karet could be removed with Malkot, yeah. which is in this court, so then they're no different. It must be that there are other rabbis who argue on Rav Hanan ibn Gamliel that Malkot does not take away Karet. So it's a proof to Rabbi Yochanan. Beautiful. And if like you're saying, Rabbi Hanani ben Gamliel, So then both Shabbat and Yom Kippur are bidei adam. So the Gemara gives two ref refutations to this. It's not necessarily a proof to Rabbi Yochanan. Why? So Amr Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nachman is the first one. Rabbi Nachman is going to say like this. I'll just speak it and we'll see it inside. Rabbi Nachman is going to say, we have a position called Rabbi Yitzchak. It's brought in Masechet uh, Malk, uh, Makot as well. 
Rabbi Yitzchak's position is whenever you're dealing with a situation of karet, it's not that Malkot doesn't remove the karet, maybe it does, but you can't receive Makot if you're Chayav Karet. His position, as he has Drashot in the Torah, we're going to see, it's just impossible. It's just, imp- meaning it's a technicality. There's no concept of receiving Makot when you're, chay- when you're Chayav Karet. Meaning, theoretically, maybe it could remove Karet, but the point is you can't practically receive it because the Psukim in the Torah imply that that won't work. So therefore, the Tana of our Mishnah might be Rabbi Yitzchak. And he might say, I would agree, like Rabbi Hananya ben Gamliel, that if you would receive Malkot, theoretically it should take off Karet, but practically there's a technicality, you can't. How does he see that? Some of Nachman, Hamani, Rabbi Yitzchak, this is the position of Rabbi Yitzchak, our Mishnah. He, and therefore it's not a proof to Rabbi Yochanan. And to Amar, because Rabbi, Rabbi Yitzchak says, Malkot bechayavei kritut leka. There's no concept of Malkot when it comes to someone who's chayav karet. Where does he know this from? The Tanya, like the Brayta says, Rabbi Yitzchak Omer, chayavei kritut bechlal hayu. So the source is by the Arayot. We know in Nacharimot Kiddushim, it talks about the forbidden relationships. Now, it says in general, anyone who does any of those forbidden relationships is chayav karet. It says it in general. V'lama yatsata karet ba'achoto. So Rabbi Yitzchak says, why does the pasuk specifically say regarding a person's sister, if he has relations with her, he's also chayav karet. Why did it have to make a highlight on the particular if it already said any of them, all of them are chayav karet? So the Gemara says, Rabbi Yitzchak deduces, ladona bikaret v'lo b'malkot. It teaches us that whenever you have a situation, at least in the Arayot, and we apply it elsewhere also, of karet, you cannot receive malkot. It's not that the malkot won't take away the karet. Practically, it's emphasizing there's only karet and there's no capacity to receive malkot. So therefore, what the Gemara is saying is, perhaps it's not a proof like Rabbi Yochanan said, because perhaps like Rabbi Hanan ben Gamliel is, is right, that Malkot should exempt you from Karet. The author of this Mishnah just told, like Rabbi Yitzchak, that you can't practically receive Malkot in a situation these persons chayav Karet. Now Rav Ashi Amari says a, a simpler answer. He says like this, really it could be like the Rabbanan, who say that you could receive Malkot. It could be like him, but it's still not a proof to Rabbi Yochanan. I feel tamer Rabbanan because ze ikars dono be de adam ze ikars dono be karet. Really, it could be that Malkot would exempt you from karet, and therefore our Mishnah could be like Rabbi Hanan ben Gamliel, really, and therefore there's no proof against him, like Rabbi Yochanan was trying to, to say. All the Mishnah means to say is the main punishment for Shabbat is be adam, which is skila, and the main punishment for Yom Kippur is be de shamayim. Could there also be a Bidei Adam type punishment for Yom Kippur? Yes, there could be, which is Malkot that would exempt you from Karet. But that's not the principal punishment. That's like the substitution. So therefore the Mishnah is drawing this distinction because in, in, in general, that is the distinction. Granted, it could be that Malkot would exempt you from Karet, but that wouldn't be a question on Rebbe Hanan ben Gamliel. Okay, we'll stop here. I'm Zayin Mudbet. We'll pick up tomorrow with Chet and Mudalef.